In this video, I'm going to walk you through using the script on my blog that uses SharePoint's Search REST API and the jQuery library fullcalendar.io to create a calendar views in SharePoint that are rollups uh, from multiple different tasks lists. And uh, so let's just walk through my site, my features here, and let's just kind of see how everything's set up. Uh, here I have my site in SharePoint Online. And in this site, I have a tasks list. So if we look at that task list, it's just an out of the box task list with the task name, the due date, the start date, and who the task is assigned to. I also have a subsite, and that subsite is called sub stuff. And within this subsite, I also have a list of tasks. And again, this is an out of the box task list with a task name, due date, start date, and who the task is assigned to. So what we want to do is we want to create a calendar view that takes all the tasks from the subsite and the main site collection and puts them get them together in one calendar view. So to do that, we're going to use the script from from my blog. So if we go in to the site assets library of my root site collection, um, of my actual site collection, sorry, it's not the root site collection. I have the file there, spfullcalendarrollup.js, and this is the script from my blog. Uh, there'll be a link to the blog post in the description of the video so you can go grab that. And so let's quickly take a look at what we have in this script. Uh, first of all, we're referencing the jQuery library. Then we're referencing the moment library that's, that full calendar needs for dates. And then we reference the full calendar library and the CSS needed for that. We then have a couple of parameters to set. The first one is uh, the path to the SharePoint site that we want to search for tasks. For my example, I only want to search my site collection and the subsites of that site collection. I don't want to search all of the site collections in my tenant. If you don't specify the path parameter in your query, it will search all of those site collections. I also have an array of colors here, and this is just so I can set my tasks to be different colors. Uh, in this instance, we're going to set them to different colors based upon the name of the site they came from. So you'll visually be able to see what a task, what site a task came from by the difference of colors. Now you don't have to set the different colors per site name. You could do it for some other parameter, like maybe who it's assigned to, or even like the status of the task, or whatever you want it to do. Uh, here we have the uh, initialization of the full calendar library. This works just like it did in the previous blog post where I went through this, so I'm not going to go a lot into a lot of detail. What I want to concentrate on is our REST query here. And in this REST query, uh, this is the query we, query we make to SharePoint to tell it we want to return tasks. And by, we do this by specifying a content type that contains the type of tasks. So if you wanted to use this script with a different content type, you would replace task here with the name of your content type. Uh, the next thing we're doing is we're specifying which path you should include in the search. Again, if you remove this path from the query, it will research all of your site collections and subsites. We then want to tell it which date range to search through. We don't want to return every single task that we have in our task list. We only want to return the tasks that fall into the date range of our calendar view. And we are given that date range by this uh, events function, which passes into it a start date and end date, which is the start date and end date for the uh, calendar that we're currently, the month we're currently looking at. So I'm telling the query, hey, only return the, the tasks that are either start or end in this current uh, start date and end date or that overlap. So if it started before our month and ended after the month, we still want to see that if we're doing a, a duration uh, type task. So give me all of those tasks. And you'll notice that I'm actually searching and uh, querying by this refinable date zero zero field and I'm not refining by the start date and end date. That's because if we come back over here to our site and we go into our site settings, and then we go into the search schema. If we do a search for start date from our search schema, which is the column that we're trying to query on, you will notice that start date is, is not a managed property that we can use to do any querying. So we actually have to map the start date and end date to some of the placeholder fields. In this instance, I'm using the refinable date fields uh, and I'm using the refinable date zero zero field. As you can see here, I'm refining both start, I'm mapping both start date and due date to the refinable date zero zero field. 
The reason I am mapping both fields to this one managed property is because now in my query, when I'm trying to say, give me all the tasks that fall within these date ranges, I don't have to have a complicated query that says start date is greater than equal start date, due date, less equal due date. I can just use that one refinable date zero zero because it encompasses both dates. So it's gonna simplify my REST query doing that. Uh, after we've got our query here, the next thing we wanna do is say which fields do we want to return, we wanna look at. And I want to return the site title because I wanna know the name of the site the task came from, the name of the task, the URL to the display form of the task, who the task is assigned to, the ID of the task, and then we're returning refinable date 02 and refinable date 01. And this is the due date and the start date for a task. Again, going back to those managed properties, the, uh, the start date and due date are not searchable fields. So we can't, or they're not retrievable fields, I'm sorry. So we can't specify those field names in the query. I actually needed to map due date to refinable date 01 and start date to refinable date 02. And then by using those, uh, refi those refinable date fields, that's how I can retrieve uh, those dates. Okay, so there's our REST query. We're gonna make a REST call. And then in the results, we have to parse that data. And uh, it, this is not as quite straightforward as a list query. In, in uh, a list REST query, our results come back as uh, data.d.results, so it's a very uh, small path to our data. But when using the search REST API, it's much deeper. We have to go into data.d.query.primaryQueryResult.RelevantResults.Table.Rows.Results. And these are all the rows of our results. So we then have to go through each array of objects within, those, within each row to get the actual uh, values from that search parameter. And also the JSON object that comes back for each item, it's not just one object with multiple properties for every field that we want to return, it's one object per field. And each object has a key and it has a value. And the key is going to be the name of the field that gets returned in that object and then the value is the value of that field. So I'm just using a simple switch statement here as I go through each object to find the correct items I'm looking for. I'm looking for the assigned to, the title, the URL, the start date, which is refinable date 02, the due date, the ID, and the site column. And now that I have all these variables set, I've got a little bit of logic here to say basically set the color based upon the site's name, and then let's push the event into an array of events where the title of what we're going to see for the task is going to be the site name, colon, the name of the task dash the person it's assigned to, start date and due date, the URL. So when we click on the event, it'll take us to that URL and the color of what that event should be. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So we have our script uploaded. I walked you guys through the script. So now I can come back into my site over here. I can go into my site pages. And in my site pages, I am going to create a new web part page and I'll call this web part page calendar. And let me overwrite it just in case it exists. So we have our web part page here and I'm gonna add a web part uh, to this web part page. I'm gonna add a media and content, content editor web part. And now I am going to edit the web part and link it to that file in our site assets library. So it's site assets, it's sp full calendar rollup.js. And now I'll apply that. And you can see here, I'll go and stop editing, that we have all of our tasks coming across in our calendar view. And you can see that there's a brown one and there's a green colored one for the different subsites. So the, the color coding is different. You can see that we have the name of the site, the name of the task and who it's assigned to. So here's stuff, then here's sub stuff. If we click on the task, it takes us to the display form for that task, okay? So using this method, we can find tasks all over uh, our tenant. So if I come back into the script, so let's, let's play with a couple of things in the script so you can see that in action. If I come into the script and I say, well, I don't wanna specify that path parameter because I wanna search all of the sites, I can just go ahead and delete that from the query, save it, and now when I reload, 
It's now going to return us tasks from all over. So the other thing I want to show you is that if you, you notice how in our calendar view, uh, the dates are, they're spanning the start date and due date. And maybe you've got so many tasks across so many sites that you don't want to see the span. Maybe you only want to see the due dates in that calendar view. So to do that, uh, what we're going to do is come into the script. And instead of specifying both a start date and due date, we're just going to specify this start parameter. And we're going to tell it that we want to show the due date in that start parameter. And since we're not, since we're not specifying the end date uh, for that events object, it will only display that due date or that date we tell it to display uh, as the start uh, parameter. So if I save this script now and reload the page, you can see now we just have uh, due dates. So each one of these date entries you see, instead of spanning multiple days, it is just the task that is due that day. And again, we can click on that task and it'll take us to that task, uh, display version of that task. So this can help your calendar views not get so cluttered, okay? So that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, feel free to download the script, play with it, specify your own content types, maybe search different paths, and um, yeah, good luck, thanks.